During my school days, my friends and I used to hope that there would be heavy rains just so we could get a holiday. <laughs> Those were the days. You know, there is something interesting about the rains in India. Every year, just after your summer vacations end, around June, you search for your umbrellas and get prepared for the coming rainy season, right? And by September or October, just around your autumn break, the rains are almost gone. And we set our umbrellas aside for the next year. Now, this happens almost every year, roughly around the same time. Coming around June, staying for a few months and then leaving. The monsoons do sound like an annual guest, right? Okay, now let's see more about the rainfall patterns in India. In order to understand this, we need to understand the mechanism of the monsoon in India first. Let's start with a basic question. What is the meaning of the term monsoon? People think of monsoon as summer rain. However, monsoon is actually caused by changes in the wind pattern. The term monsoon refers to the seasonal reversal of the wind system. Winds blow from sea to land during some months of the year. And in the reverse direction during some other months of the year. Now, we know what monsoon is, but how is it related to rainfall? To answer this, we must first get our basics right. So, let's get right to it. To understand monsoon, the mechanism of the monsoon and its relation to rainfall, we need to understand a few concepts first. First, the relation between temperature and pressure. Given two regions, one with a higher temperature and the other with a lower temperature. The place with the higher temperature develops a low pressure region. The place with the lower temperature develops a high pressure region. So, whenever this pressure difference is created, air starts moving from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure. Second, we have the differential heating and cooling of land and water. Land heats up and cools down faster compared to water. During summer, low pressure develops over land and high pressure develops over the sea. So, the direction of the wind will be from the sea to the land. And the opposite will happen during winters. Third is the concept of the Coriolis effect, which explains how wind direction is affected by Earth's rotation. On the rotating Earth, wind gets deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. But how does the rotation of the earth deflect winds? Well, we already know that the earth spins on its axis from west to east. We also know that the earth is almost spherical and so it is wider at the center near the equator as compared to the poles. And so points on the equator are actually moving faster in comparison to places near the poles. Now imagine that you have a paper plane which can travel thousands of kilometers. If you throw it from Bengaluru straight up to the north, you would expect it to land here, somewhere near Delhi. But you would be wrong and here is where things get interesting. Bengaluru being closer to the equator is actually spinning faster than Delhi. 
So, when you throw the paper plane from Bengaluru, it will land to the east of Delhi. So, from your point of view, the plane would have taken a curved path to its right. And in general, in the northern hemisphere, winds will get deflected to the right. Now, in the southern hemisphere, the effect would be the exact opposite. An object travelling from the equator towards the south will get deflected to its left. This phenomenon helps us understand the direction of the winds in both the hemispheres. Fourth, let us consider the concept of ITCZ. We know that areas around the equator are exposed to a high amount of direct sunlight, which creates a low pressure region. This attracts winds from high pressure regions. Because of the Coriolis force, these winds get deflected towards their right in the northern hemisphere and towards their left in the southern hemisphere. We call these winds as the Northeast Trade Winds and the Southeast Trade Winds respectively. The low pressure region around which both of these winds converge is called the Intertropical Convergence Zone or the ITCZ. ITCZ is generally located near the equator almost parallel to it, but it moves north or south of the equator with the apparent movement of the sun. Now this leads us to our next concept, the apparent motion of the sun. We know the earth's axis of rotation is tilted at an angle of 23.5 degrees. And it revolves around the sun. In this position, the northern hemisphere is oriented or tilted towards the sun. six months, the southern hemisphere is oriented or tilted towards the sun. So, if you are an observer on earth, you will feel that the sun has moved southwards. As time passes, Again, you will feel that it starts moving northwards. This motion of the sun from the point of view of a person from earth is called the apparent motion of the sun. As the sun moves south or north of the equator, the ITCZ shifts south or north as well. Well, now that our basic concepts are clear, we are ready to unravel the mysterious mechanism of monsoon. India is located in the zone where the northeast trade winds blow all year. Something quite interesting happens as summer approaches. During the summer months from March to May, due to the apparent northward movement of the sun, the ITCZ shifts northwards over the Ganga plains. This creates a low pressure region over here. Sometimes the ITCZ is also referred to as monsoon trough during the monsoon season. In addition to this, the Tibetan plateau north of the Himalayas also gets heated up a lot, intensifying the low pressure. 
So, the land areas in and around the Indian subcontinent get heated up, creating a low pressure zone. As the water around the Indian subcontinent is cooler, so a high pressure region develops over it, especially around the island of Madagascar. Now, once again, a pressure difference has been created. So, the winds are ready to move. This low pressure zone of the monsoon trough over the Ganga plains attracts the southeast trade winds from the southern hemisphere. These winds cross the equator and turn towards their right because of the Coriolis force. These winds then start moving towards the Indian subcontinent, entering from the southwest direction. Along their path, they pick up moisture from the Indian Ocean and cause rainfall in the Indian subcontinent. The monsoon winds cover almost all parts of the country. These winds blow from June to September. After September, due to the apparent motion of the sun towards the southern hemisphere, the low pressure zone in the Indian subcontinent withdraws gradually. As a result, the pressure difference that caused the monsoon winds to enter the Indian subcontinent weakens and gradually disappears. Slowly, the southwest monsoon winds get replaced by the northeast trade winds. Thus, the winds reverse their direction, completing one monsoon cycle. In this one cycle, we saw the reversal of winds twice in a year. One reversal was around the end of summer when the northeast trade winds were replaced by the southwest monsoon winds which brought along the rains. And the second reversal was when the southwest monsoon winds weakened and were replaced by the northeast trade winds. This rhythmic reversal of winds is a permanent feature of the Indian subcontinent. That's why the climate of this region is called monsoon climate. So, that's why you usually keep umbrellas and raincoats in your bags for only a few months in the year. And this change in your school bags is actually caused by the tussle between different winds.